Much peace and love to all of you out there who are listening to this podcast for You We Live, episode two. In this episode, I had the absolute honor of interviewing two of the artists from last week's podcast. Christine McCose and also Stefan London, who you shall be listening to shortly. Without further ado, please enjoy. All right. Today, for the viewers out there, I'm about to interview Christine McCose. Welcome, Christine, to For You We Live podcast. And today we want to just find out a little bit more about the singer of Wash Me Away, the artist behind Wash Me Away. So I just wanted to find out, Christine, for the viewers out there, exactly where you originally from and if there was one word to describe yourself, what would that be? Oh boy. <laughs> Well, thank you for having me on your program. Um, I originally come from Minnesota, and I've been up in Alaska for the last 30 years. And as far as describing myself in one word, oh boy, that's kind of a difficult one. Um, I don't think about that too often. Uh, hmm, eclectic, maybe? I'm not certain. It, I guess you'll have to kind of come to that own, your own conclusion after this interview. Oh, that. That's a that's a wonderful answer. Eclectic. So I'm guessing that you don't you don't stay in any particular genre. You're not defined by any particular genre of music. You um, basically express the inspiration that comes to you. Yes, I do. Uh, giving you know whoever introduces the song to me, what type of style, whatever it is, I try to fall into. Uh, the place where the, the song originates from, be it jazz, Christian, contemporary Christian, uh, uh, country, rock and roll, you know, it, it just depends on the music itself. And and so I, I place myself, I, you know, kind of go inside of myself and, and I, I do a power walk around the block here and I really work on the, the song and try to to put out something that uh, lifts the song up to make it sound good and, and hopefully the listeners like what I put out. So it's, uh, it's a process, but it's uh, something that I truly enjoy. Wonderful. I have to ask then, how would you define yourself as a musician? Um, on this program, uh, we, we generally we have Christian artists on this program who generally sing contemporary gospel, gospel, you know, gospel rap, Christian rap, hip hop. But you are adding an extra dimension to this. You're not that definable. You you don't necessarily sing Christian contemporary music. How would you define yourself? I know we discussed this before, but um, for the viewers, how do you define yourself as um, a musician, as an artist to, to, to the world? Uh, that has changed a lot. It's, it's kind of hard to really put myself in a box right now because originally, uh, many years ago, I started in, in country and I progressed to rock, country rock, uh, boy, and swing. I've done, I've done so many different genres of music, but uh, some years ago, I really started uh, filling the call uh, to start writing some Christian material. And the reason I stopped recording my Christian music is because my producer had a major issue with the studio. He called me just before I was supposed to fly in and said, don't come. His studio, unfortunately, was flooded because of uh, frozen pipes thawing out upstairs and it like rained down on top of all of his equipment and destroyed everything. And so that took care of that. And uh, then few months later he had a uh, a small stroke and so it just kind of put a, a big stop to everything and then I just talked to him recently and he said he's not going to be doing any more producing or recording so that ended my Christian music uh, with him but after that I was um, contacted by uh, a gentleman out of the Ukraine Alex Kuzman and uh, he propositioned me with uh, writing music for me, and I thought, hmm, this could be interesting. So I accepted, and that's when I started uh, heading into a totally different genre, smooth jazz, uh, just 
totally different uh, area. I've never really uh, been there before, but I've always enjoyed listening to it. And I thought this is a great challenge, and so I took him up on it. And and at the same time, I met Jeff Waters uh, through Reverb Nation, and uh, about the same time I got a song from Alex, I got one from Jeff to record too. So uh, when I did go back into the studio recording again, I had three songs to record, and that was Wash Me Away and Heavenly Moments and Bonnie and Clyde Funky Blues. And so those are the three songs that I started on my new career, and uh, that's where I'm at right now. I'm working actually a uh, little bit with Alex on and off, and uh, I've got another gentleman I'm starting to work with that uh, I just recently put out a song called uh, The Last Bridge, and I'm uh, working on his latest song that he has on his uh, reverbation list, and it's, uh, it's a fun challenge, and so that's where I'm at right now, but uh, trying to define myself is not the easiest thing to do, because I, I can hop all over the place. <laughs> I mean, it's so fascinating to just listen to what you're saying. If you could just elaborate a little bit about the collaborations you have with Alex and with Mr. Waters, uh, Wash Me Away, for instance, you're talking about meeting them, but... I guess the viewers may not know what that entailed and uh, what is this new era of music collaborations and if you could just explain a little bit more. I certainly can. Um, what I discovered, ReverbNation.com, when I joined up there, I was just amazed at the amount of talent, very famous to very unknown. And so once I signed up and started putting out my Christian music, you know, people started fanning me and listening to my music, and, and the remarks were, you know, pretty positive. And I thought, wow, this is great. So I started putting out some of my older material, too. And, uh, you know, you fan people. They fan you back. You can write private messages. They can comment pub, uh, publicly. And uh, when I met Alex and Jeff, which was about the same time, it was, oh, I suppose a year ago in the end of May, somewhere around that time, when you, you get offered with collaborations, what they do, the technological age has really changed things. And so this is all new for me too because I'm kind of, I'm a little bit older and I'm having to learn how to actually go about doing it. When I first met Jeff on Reverb Nation, you know, he would direct me to a couple of songs of his and one was Wash Me Away. And when I first heard that, I was, I was, blown away. I loved it. I thought, wow, this is just a really beautiful song. And so I, I definitely let him know that. And uh, we had a few more exchanges and uh, probably within a month he asked me if I actually wanted to record it. And I said, yeah. <laughs> and um, then yeah, I suppose it, it took me about a month or so of working on it because I had two other collaborations going on at the other, at the same time. And I just wanted to make sure that when I had to fly back into Anchorage, I had all of this stuff ready so that within a couple of days I could get the stuff laid down. And But uh, once we got the track back, uh, and we sent it to his producer, Mike Boggs. It took a little bit before I actually got the file back. And then once I got it back, I was pleasantly surprised. And so that's what you're hearing these days. I'm hoping to do some more with Jeff, but it may be a while because unfortunately his producer passed away here May 28th. And it was kind of unexpected. So... That kind of put a stop to a lot of uh, possibilities, but you, you never know what the future is going to hold. So that's about Wash Me Away. If you if you don't mind mentioning who his producer was? His producer was Michael Boggs, and he was based pretty much out of the same area that Jeff lives in. And uh, I never met the guy personally, and I haven't met Jeff either, but uh, he was... He was a very, very professional person with great talent, and uh, I've said this before, but Heaven gained an astounding musician, and uh, sadly, we lost him here on Earth. Wow, that's you get to meet all these wonderful people in your life, which you probably wouldn't have been able to meet otherwise. I mean, that's a blessing in itself. I mean, Wash Me Away is a song that's so, as you said, if you fall in love with it, and it's it's. To me, it's a very spiritual song as well. You know, healing seems to be saying. You do play instruments. What instruments do you play? And then after you've answered that, could you just, again, go into your singing songwriter background 
and how that impressed you as to how to, to sing and express the song Wash Me Away because a lot of a lot of artists out here some of them are just singers you are a singer songwriter and also a musician so from that perspective could you just you know speak up a little bit about what impressed you and how how you were able to approach wash me away well i play uh two instruments um piano is my first instrument i've been playing that since i was a little girl unfortunately where i live right now i'm not able to practice it like i'd like but um i was given a gift of uh, a guitar here a few years ago and it's something that I'm slowly working on. I played long, long time ago, but I'm not proficient whatsoever. So I, I, I'm very reluctant to play live with a guitar until I feel really comfortable. But as far as Wash Me Away, vocally, well, Jeff sings it. And I followed pretty much what he does on, you know, I, I changed a few slight, you know, back and I was working on the melody line. Um, I did just a few minor changes on it. And... I practiced it for, you know, until I felt very comfortable with it, and I had two other collaborations going on at the same time, and so I had quite a bit of, um, you know, music on my plate to take to the studio, and once I got there and my producer engineer was working with me, um, you know, he'd say, let's try some different things, and especially ad living at the end, and and uh, it turned out pretty nice. I, I was quite happy with what we had done, and once... It got to uh, Michael, and he mixed it down, and it took a little bit. I got it back, and I was really pleased with uh, just the mix overall. It's it was the beginning. It was it was refreshing, something new, and just it lifted me up. You know, it, it took me to a different place. I thought, wow, I'm gonna have fun with this because uh, I'm not getting any younger, and the music is something that is my passion, and I want to continue in this direction. So. Jazz, smooth jazz, adult contemporary, you know, Christian. I can mix it all together, and I, I can, um, I can take it someplace, and uh, hopefully, people enjoy it. It's, it's really wonderful just listening to that song. It's very refreshing, and the other song, Heavenly Moments, is, it's incredible. I would like to let all the viewers out there know that you can find more of Christine's music at christinesmusic.com. Thank you so very much, Christine, for allowing us this opportunity to interview you. Well, thank you for having me on your program. The honor is mine, definitely. And now, without further ado, we're going to hear Wash Me Away by Christine McCoes. <laughs> Rearrange 
into the second interview right now i just want to welcome to our podcast today which is for you we live our brother stefan london concerning the artist behind the song all i need good day mr london how are you today good morning man i'm cool i'm i'm blessed i'm favored all right all right all right can you tell them uh, where you are from and also what influenced you into singing spiritual music? Okay, well, first of all, I'm Stefan London from Trinidad and Tobago, from Side, Prince of Sound to be exact. And well, my influence in Trinidad and Tobago music was, well, to talk this right, I grew up in church, and as any other Christian, then she struggles of life and even back to the point in time. And in her back it was when God really came and speak to me and was like, you have a purpose for my life. But for my purpose to actually be manifested, I need to get back in alignment with him. Well, sometimes we say these things and some people out there who are probably not of a Christian background, Sometimes they don't fully understand what we're speaking about. If you were to sort of say that in a sentence, how would you like convey that to somebody who doesn't have that experience? Well, the thing is right, God speaks to us on a daily basis. And sometimes He speaks to us via things that happen in our our lives. Like for example, He may have been in an accident and in the accident because he had a voice and he was a bit of a little form of relationship with him or get back closer to him or even you drink in a bar as one of my partners you want to say something to this some time ago, right? I'm out in a bar drinking and he went to listen to one of the songs in a concert close by the guy said the song and by that he just said stop drinking and, and to the church, right? So it is something that happens or comes across in life naturally. Right. Hey, the boys and I might say, nah, but they're not talking to me. That, well, this can't be real, but it is real. Right, right. right. Sort of like your conscience, something something speaking to you in the back of your mind, saying, you know. That's just not the conscience. It's just not because things in our back of our mind and the ears like, well, let me ask you then specifically, how did you get into music ministry? How did you get involved in music itself? How did you get involved in that? Okay, well, like any other church, well, I grew up in church and stuff, you know, when she ran so being any choirs, you know, in junior choir, senior choir. Right, so in church, I was involved in the junior choir and senior choir, and eventually we went on the play drums in church and during the period of 2004 we formed our first church band a band by the name of New Era where I was one of the drummers to the band and slash songwriter to that extent and they were so cutting into music and a whole and then from New Era I went on to play for a band called Born Again and the she right and Born Again was like we got real sticky, real tough. And eventually, I was like, Stefan, my purpose for you is to go out and speak to people and spread 
is you told me you just said that you you used to play the drums what other instruments do you play and um, what else do you do besides uh, singing and composing music um, well, apart from drumming first of all uh, into the keyboard and guitar but I don't really play them as much I practice with my guitar more like in my room and I'm singing the keyboard but or you work with a specific uh, set of people? interested in um, dealing with other genres of music to get the message across as well, crossover and those kind of things? Well, actually, as I said, the track that I'm working on right now is a more kind of R&B thing of contemporary fusion. Nice, nice. So it's a more kind of worship vibe and including up the other kind of hype and stuff that you really get for me. So what are your future projects and how can people get, first of all, how can uh, somebody get in contact with any of your latest your latest activities in terms of probably performing or um, some event that you may be at is, is there um, engagements that you'll be involved in uh, in the not too distant future well like I mentioned earlier presently I'm, like, I'm in the process of putting it on my first album right and as far as when the setting comes along, most of my projects, most of my concert dates and venues is posted on the Hope Nation. And well, as the events come closer, I post them via Twitter, to Facebook, and to my piece. But once you are into the social network, the hell of a London is very easy. Nice. So you can always, for the viewers out there, you can contact Stefan through Reverb Nation at reverbnation.com forward slash Stefan London. On Facebook, in search, type in Stefan, S-T-E-F-A-N. I have a few more other things to ask you. First one is based on the song, All I Need. The first time I heard that song, I couldn't get it out of my head. You know, so can you tell me a little bit about the inspiration behind that, the story behind that song? Well, 
dancing now. All I need is actually my first composition I wrote. And it was written back in 2007. All I need is basically my first testimony in song. Right, um, it was that point in life where I was in working. Left as a felt like I was being victimized and stuff. And she was all the only constant effect that was there with Jesus. And as you can say, my dear, the strength that I need to make it through the day, the inspiration I need, right? The power that I need to back to the very end. Because Jesus Christ is above any need. And the people must in life, we go through many battles and many, many shadows. And we are often like all with the way it's into. And 2007, April, May, June, that was me. And God provided, keep you for me. It's, it's quite a quite a ministry. I believe it'll minister to a lot of people. So, who, how did you get the song into the studio? How did you get the song to that that level? I mean, it's it's quite a high quality song. The people are singing in the back there, the professional vocalists and so on. How do you get to the point where you actually got that song? You wrote it in 2007. How do you get it into the studio? And how did all of that happen? Well. I was to the toes now seven eight and well, back then I was still a trauma in, in Born Again. And well I had people around me would be like, Oh the message is in the song serious, you need to get out there. But although I am a drama, I was more a timid, shy drama. And I was singing more me, I can't do that boy. Nah, I really can't do that. And Eventually, I went seven years, right? Called Victor and I was like the fun. A purpose for you is to go out and spread my word, spread my gospel, right? Through the way you know how it is music. Eventually, I ended up going to a concert in 2010. That was CYI and Mr. Lynx. And well, Koi Duncan was there. So, their conversation changed numbers. And two weeks after, I called them, went into the studio, I sang what I had to them, and was like, I like this. Hmm. But, Stefan, not knowing much about music and stuff, I was like, just laughed, and I was like, boy, mm, okay, cool up, it's like this. Wow. And just for, the, just for the viewers, sorry for interrupting, but just for the viewers, uh, just for their knowledge, who is uh, Mr. Corwin Duncan? Corwin Duncan is one of my inspiration, one of my role models in terms of gospel music. He is one of the premier gospel artists in the Caribbean. So just to hear that he found merit in that song, that was a huge, huge inspiration to you, right? Yeah. 
man, I used you. I said, nah, that's not me. The backup vocals on that track was on my Katie Peters. She is an amazing talent. Well, praise, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, because that song is a blessing to, I'm sure, a lot of people, both in Trinidad and also throughout the, the world now. And um, it's just amazing how so many people are being blessed all over the world by your song, by that simple song that the Lord gave to you. That really just, it just hits people. I know I am totally blessed by it. At the time when you wrote that song in 2007, you didn't have a job. Of course, at the end, when you're writing, when you hear the end of the testimony of the song, you do have a job. You do have much more than that. Um, what would you tell to someone out there? How would you tell someone out there uh, to strengthen their trust in God? Somebody out there who may be listening to this podcast and really needs to hear that. Well, Mr. Anson, first of all, without faith, it's impossible to please him. And with that said, from in court, he has it for us. And it's just for us to open our arms, open our hands, and take it from him. And people often are frustrated and fed up saying that nothing is going their way, stuff like that, but if it is we don't like ourselves with God, we get in connection with God. How can we create what is right to us? Indeed, indeed. He also says that faith are going to the master of faith move mountains. And if it is we pray and we pray half heartedly and always believe and trust in that what we pray what we speak about could actually manifest it in our lives. We said in what's our short. God is not only capable, he will do whatever he has provided for. It's just for us to really receive it. Amen, amen. Well, uh, I'm blessed to have spoken to you. I'm honored to meet you, a minister of the gospel. And um, I thank you so very much for taking this time, your time, to be a part of this interview on For You We Live. Um, anything interesting about yourself you might want to share with the worldwide audience? Um, when you say interested, um... I know you're Latin, Dan. <laughs> and if you don't mind me saying, is there a Mrs. London out there? Um, yes, there is, yes, there is, yes. <laughs> there's no suit to me. Yes, and she's an inspiration. She supports 150%. And um, in terms of stuff about me, I'm most certain that. The world doesn't that Stefan but on the same track running against the likes of Tank Brown and Mark Wills and even Ricky Thompson as well as that one some years ago when he was in the track and field. Wow! Wow! <laughs> <laughs> That's very interesting. <laughs> what do you think of you saying both? Um, he is a phenomenal athlete. <laughs> Do you think, do you think there's anybody right now who you think is capable of in, in current track and field that, that uh, probably could give us some competition? Um, to answer the question, the race of a hundred meters is a very interesting race. It could be the most fastest on any given day, but conditions right. need to happen. You have a bad start and that could be it. So, unnatural, unnatural activity right now, it is hard for anybody to get busy mood, but on any given day, anything happens. Yep, you heard it live here, an exclusive step on London was a hundred meter sprinter running against the likes of the current Olympic silver medalist Richard Thompson. Yes, you heard it right here on For You We Live. Well, that brings us to the end of episode two, taking us out. Step on London. All I need. Until next time, folks. Peace.
and much love to you all. Psalms 18, verse 1. Oh, 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 oh. I love you, O oh Lord, my strength. Yeah. I might give me the strength that I need to make it through the day. Give me the power I need to battle through to the very end. Inspiration I need. I tell when I'm feeling down. Jesus Christ, you are all I need. I might give me the strength that I need to make it through the day. Give me the power I need to battle through to the very end. Inspiration I need. I tell when I'm feeling down. Jesus Christ, you are all I need. Now I stop and I look at how my life has gone It's been full of a lot, a lot of ups and downs There was times when I, I felt like giving up When you faces in life and I was too weak to fight Feeling all alone, like no one was around But Almighty God, you were always there Almighty, give me the strength that I need To make it through the day, give me the power I need to battle to the very end Inspiration I need, I tell when I'm feeling young Jesus Christ, you were all all I need I might give me the strength that I need To make it through the day Give me the power I need To battle you to the very end Inspiration I need I tell when I'm feeling down Jesus Christ you are all I need Living a good and seek your job because of all the fighting down No feeling some mistake because of whom just passing time Being broken out a dime, not a dime in sight Taking loans after loans to make it through the mud Not knowing when I would be employed again I might give me the strength that I need To make it through the day, give me the power I need To battle you to the very end Inspiration I need, I tell when I'm feeling down Jesus Christ you are all I need Almighty give me the strength that I need To make it through the day Give me the power I need To battle you to the very end Inspiration I need I tell when I'm feeling down Jesus Christ you are all I need Now a few months has gone by When I got a phone call All things that seemed doomed Started looking blue All the hopelessness I felt My father kicked it all away And he came true for me yet again Now I got the best job Thanks be to God I think I'm that is nice Thanks be to God Even open my business Thanks be to God Almighty God you have done it again Almighty give me the strength that I need To make it through the day Give me the power I need To battle you to the very end Inspiration I need I tell when I'm feeling down Jesus Christ you are all I need Almighty give me the strength that I need To make it through the day Give me the power I need To battle you to the very end Inspiration I need I tell when I'm feeling down Jesus Christ you are all I need Once you walk with Jesus Christ, He is all in need. Cause stuff and land and sense, huh? Ah. Love your Lord. Inspiration.